The pentamine is for people that play everything. It's quite different from any other competition. It involves many different games. Very different games that involve very different skills. As a pro gamer, it means everything. It is the World Championships. If you wanted to show yourself to be the best games player, you have to win the Pentamind. I, without further ado, declare the Mayan Sports Olympiad open and invite Grandmaster Keane to make his first move. Thank you, everyone. Bravo! Our ambition was to create an Olympics for the mine. Absolutely huge, internationally giant, the greatest mental sports festival the world had ever seen. It's been called the biggest gathering of anoraks ever. Experts in chess, backgammon, bridge, and other more obscure mind games. These first ever intellectual Olympics have attracted contestants from 30 countries. Top players in, for example, African Oware. It was amazing, there was like thousands of people, all the top games players around the world in all the different games. All the top chess players are there, all the top fellow players, go players. It was really exciting. The Pentamind is the competition to find the all-round best games player at the MSO. Effectively, it's pick your best five results from five different games. And the person that has the most points at the end of the MSO is the Pentamind champion. When I was a child, I started wondering someday, there is a chess world champion, there is a checkers world champion, there is a bridge world champion, but who is the best in mind sports? If they would play all of these three games, who would be the overall winner? From this idea, this light started to burn in my head. Now we are about to get to Tartu, which was my home for the half of my life for 15 years. And my academic career was spent here. I was teaching in the Department of Economics and my main course was game theory. This was the time when I started to play mind sports and year after year I took it more and more seriously. I was still teaching in the university officially because unofficially I spent all my life playing games. When he was a lecturer, during daytime he gave lectures, but during nights he played in internet. During these nighttime games he earned as much or even more than he earned as a lecturer. Economics perhaps was a bit too boring for him. It was at the end of 2009, somebody randomly came up with the idea that maybe there is World Championships in mind sports. I googled and I think it was Wikipedia where I found out about the Pentamind Championships. I decided, let's have a go. First time, I think he got the second or third place. 
And then I knew that he wanted to be the first one. And I think he trained almost half a year. The title that I won last year, which was my fourth, was by no means less important for me than the very first one. Several people have asked me what keeps me going after winning uh, several titles. And I think what is the most important for me is the emotion I get in the very next second after uh, being declared the winner. And this is why it is so important for me to, to, to try to win it and to, to, to be the champion. Games are always on my mind. I just love the problem solving, logical thinking, those kind of skills that were required to be good at games. And I've always wanted to play them competitively. And now I do it professionally. My name's Game King 51. If you see Game King 51 online in like any kind of gaming platform, that's me. I first started playing chess when I was like eight years old. I just like had this obsession of wanting to play the best I could. I even had like chess cards with problems on them and I would take them to school and like try and solve them during class and then my teachers confiscated them. When he started first playing chess, he used to be in a room for three, four hours, sitting there playing games. And you know, you come around and where's Ankush? Oh, he's playing games. Come after two hours, he's playing that game. And that is how his concentration was. He used to play both opponents himself with a book by the side, and he just played on and on. The river comes to seven, which is a brilliant card for me. I've got the top full house, eights full of sevens and I take down the pot of 6,000 euros. I was a derivatives trader in Amsterdam, but I, my true passion has always been to play strategy games. The end of my trading career, I was trading all day, biking home, playing poker for like four hours a night, passing out, and then waking up the next day and doing it again. So it was all like, just all a little bit too much for me. That was a shock, you know, that was a real shock because then um, you pack up everything and you're playing poker and, you know, granddad says, Ankush, what is Ankush doing? Papa, he's playing cards. You can't, you know, you've got to speak to him. You can't keep playing cards all the time, you know. But he's enjoying, he's very happy. I always believe you should follow your passion because that's, I mean, that's like, life's pretty short. You should do what you like to do. I like things in which I can challenge myself, or test myself, or work to improve to be better than I was yesterday. And games always offer that opportunity. Last year when I didn't win the pens mind, it really hurt and I wanted to just work even harder to give myself a better chance this year. I want to win it. I want to be known as the best gamer in the world. As a job, I'm a software engineer. A lot of it is to do with problem solving, strategic thinking. You've got a lot of requests. You've got to program the best way to do them. I'm always thinking about the best way of doing something. As the optimizer, you might say. As a youngster, I was the England under 12 chess captain. So with that, I travelled kind of around Europe playing lots of chess. 
from a young age. The chess competitions used to be paired with the mind sports, and it was just from there, looking at all the different varieties of games, it was suddenly I wanted to play all of them. This year, my mind's slightly off the mind sports because you know, I'm getting married. We've been doing lots of chores for the wedding, doing up the house, room by room, lots of odd jobs every evening. I enjoy going to the mind sports, but I don't think I could go for a whole week play every day. Definitely couldn't do that. I think I went for one day the first year and I just thought people were just way too competitive for me and vowed never to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been exposed to that world where people want to win so much at playing board games. <laughs> it is a bit bizarre. So is James competitive? Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been instilled in him from a young age, which is not a bad thing. And so when is the wedding? It's in six weeks' time. It's not very far away at all. So I'm making sure that I've done all of my things before I go away to the mind sports, so I don't feel too bad leaving her mm -hmm. uh, to prepare for the wedding while I go off and play lots of games. Right. I feel mm, just a slightly bit guilty. <laughs> but, you know, if I end up winning this year, then it'll all be worth it. So. <laughs> My game playing ability is part of me, the same way that I suppose a bird flies, its wings are part of it, but the flight is part of that. I have the wings to play games, and the games is how I fly. But it's like training. You build a particular body shape for a particular event. You have to build your mind for a particular event. It's been a very long relationship with games. As a child, and I was very good at games, but sometimes regarded as too competitive by my sister, too into winning. Okay, the reason I'm showing you this game is because it's one of the key games for redefining my games play experience from my childhood. I haven't opened the box quite a long time, but this is kind of a mix between a Dungeons and Dragons world and strategic board games. It was one of the ones where it was not about winning the game, it's the journey of the game. And it was a game which you played with friends on the floor, more or less like this, where you laid, laid it out and it would take several hours to play. There was no one who could beat me. I mean, at university, I didn't get to play any games because no one was able to beat me at any game, so they didn't really want to play. This is a selection of some of the 153 medals which I've won over 20 years at the Mind Sports Olympiad. Of my 153 medals, I think this is probably the one which was the biggest competitive win because it was taken right to the wire of an 11 day tournament, went down to the final card. So I won the game by like one point. I think in terms of competitive accomplishment, this one I really had to work for. Um, and I basically decided that I wanted to win it on the last day and did. So yeah, that one was a special one. I think I was always sort of had a level of excitement to be playing the MSO. I suppose it's an opportunity to fly. I, I mean, this is the kind of thing I was looking for. I was looking for people to, to kind of challenge me and to challenge myself by winning the pentamine. I like playing games because 
while playing, I go to another universe and I stay comfortable there. I also like the story of games, the philosophy of games, everything around the, the games. Dario De Toffoli e intanto continuiamo a divertirci. Sei Max Player of the Year, eccolo qua. L'abbiamo fatta stretta perché sappiamo che lui auspica De di, di mettersi a dieta e quindi di congratulazioni marire. Dario. Grazie. Dario De Toffoli, bella, bella, bella coppa. Eh? I discovered the, the world of games by chance. It was in the middle of the 80s. I was 27, 28. I was a chemist and I worked in a laboratory in Padua. And I took part in uh, a competition I found in a magazine. I won the final. Then uh, immediately I realized this is my work. Finally, I found something I really like. And so, now it's time to go to London. Poker book. <laughs> Always I have the hope to study and never have the time. <laughs> we'll take some games in a separate bag. I was in the podium many times, the Pentham, my second, third, second, third. I think I have uh, more podium in the pentamine than anyone else. I need to play. I need the adrenaline of the tournament. When I play with strong players, for me it's a satisfaction. These are my holidays. Much better than going to a beach. Then I came back. I feel better. In the cool light of the evening, I watch you as you sleep. I'm packing up my bags, gonna chase some dreams. I'll take the umbrella in case of rainy days. And if you miss me, you can call me. Won't be far away I'll be leaving in the morning And I don't know when I'm coming back Come back to that trophy? I'm uh, trying <laughs> Okay, bye calling on clever people because between the 20th and the 28th of August lots of clever souls and game players and the like will be gathering up at the JW3 in London on the Finchley Road for the 21st annual Mind Sports Olympiad. Hi everybody, welcome. Which event are you in? Scrabble. Scrabble. Up the stairs, that way, turn left, right at the very end of the corridor. Brilliant. Were you here last year? No. That's no, oh, no. right, because you're not in the same room, so that doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. Yeah. Scrabble that way. You've got a few more, you've got seven. And apparently Richard Black has said this. I've been roped into you? arbiting the event, so yes. This is a ministry yeah, side of things on play side and it's a bit of a distraction. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a problem with people having your email address. Oh, can you do this? I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite nice. Yeah, don't trade with Ankish. Yeah. <laughs> and pick on him every time. Yes. That's always the way. Even if he's losing, yeah. secretly he's hiding something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, done. How are things going? Yeah, good. I heard you just got married, is that true? About to get married. About to get married. Okay. So, 16th of September. Nice. Um, so, three and a half weeks? Oh, and I also heard that you had like a board game stag night or something. Yeah, is yeah. That true? Yeah. So, last night around quarter to midnight, I got a call from Dario and he told me that he had some sort of sharp pain in his foot. He wasn't sure if he should go to the hospital or not, but it's good that he did because he really did have a serious condition. So he's, uh, he's not going to play Catan today, but he will be here for poker. Hello, hello everyone. Hello folks, listen up please. Thank you. <laughs> Hey. Hi everyone, I want to, my name is Eitan Hilfeld and uh, uh, I want to welcome you to the 21st Mind Sports Olympiad. Medal ceremonies will be uh, at 6.20 today and uh, that's going to take place in drama. Uh, we've actually got a podium this year, which I'm trying to take advantage of, but being uh, vertically challenged. Otherwise, yeah, have fun. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The Mind Sports Olympiad, you've got over 70 different tournaments, everything from the latest games to you know, some of the world's most ancient games. Broadly speaking, you've got traditional games like backgammon and chess, and then you've got gear games like Catan, that have mostly been invented within the last 20 years, and our multiplayer games. Yeah. And then you've got all these new modern abstract games. To win the Pentamine, you have to master games in different categories. It's very challenging to master a single game. To win the Pentamine, you really have to excel at at least five games. Thank you very much, thank you. Table six, <laughs> Yuli Lagodinsky, Nadine, I'm Joseph Collar, Chief Arbiter, and uh, if there's a dispute, I have to resolve it. And there are two rules. Rule one, I'm always right. And rule two, when I'm wrong, see rule one. You did one to seven. I did. Right, this is it. Settlers of Catan is really a very special game. It's a building game. In Catan, you're trying to gather resources from an island and build towns and roads with it, and that gets you points. And the end of the person gets the 10 points first and wins the game. But the cool thing about Catan is that the board comes in a modular puzzle-like fashion, so every game is completely different. Which resources are valuable, which resources are scarce, which resources are abundant, changes game to game. So it has this massive replay value, as well as being very skillful. Ankish, he's very tactical. Very good at thinking ahead, strategy to work out what you're doing and then counter that. You've got some pawns, right? Can you get an or somehow? I'm playing games to win. I might be quite ruthless, like from a strategical point of view, and they might take it personally. I can give you a good deal if you get me or I can give you lots of pawns. No? All right, it's your call. In games like Settlers that are less strategic, I feel I might have an advantage against him. He's probably better in the live format where you have to be slightly friendlier to your opponents. He's good at the diplomacy aspect. Oh, I was going to see that. If you try and be too aggressive early on, then that might hinder you later down the line when you're trying to do a trade with someone. And they're, they're like, well, you weren't nice to me earlier in the game, so I'm not going to be nice to you back now. Andres is definitely the person to watch out for, as he's won the pen's mind kind of the most times out of the five of us. 
I'm really focused when I'm playing these games and I'm really bad in multitasking. So I can't do two things at the same time. I can't focus on games and, uh, and being talkative and joking, fooling around. So I need to choose one of the two. Uh, everything went so badly. Yeah, I have lost first first event already with the very first round. I hope the anchor short James wouldn't get any reasonably good scores. I hope that they are doing poorly. This is Stratego. Not a place, not a time, but a battle of wit and skill and strategy. Conspire with bombs and brains to capture the enemy flag, to win the battle, to win the game. Victory awaits you. David Pierce, his main strength, no doubt, is his analytical skills. I play intuitively much better than most other people. I see what move is the best move, and so I tend to see the patterns which allow me to get to the crux of the game in order to think more efficiently through them. And then occasionally when things go wrong is when you start to have to really push yourself really hard, concentrating, thinking lots of moves ahead. If you're aiming to win, you're playing badly, and you're about to lose your key match. This is not an enjoyable experience. I lost, so I'm now competing for bronze. <laughs> so, but it was always an outside chance, this one. So I'm not too upset by that. But the medal's, the medal's still up there if I knuckle down. I got three wins and one third place. A good start, three wins out of four is pretty good. Help your chances of winning Pentamite? Uh, yeah, it should be a, a fairly good score in the 90s. I think the game around 10, so we won't be able to use it for the Pentamine, which yeah. is a shame, because Sessler's has got a big event. So if you start well in Sessler's, you've got a great chance for the Pentamine. Um, but I'm going to have to keep on going, you know. This is just the first event, got the whole week to play. Ah, my friend! My yeah. friend. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. I'm so sorry, how are you feeling? Yeah, could have been better. Yeah, but are you okay? You're very yeah, red. It's okay. Very red. Take yeah. it easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow I want to say hello to Barbara and things. Uh, this uh, evening, 10 o'clock, I was working and I had a sudden uh, big pain in the leg and then uh, I called doctors I go to the hospital it could be a thrombosis and it was anyway tomorrow I I have to go there to check uh, from Tuesday I think I'm able to play everything today only poker Okay, come and collect your money and your seating cards. In life you don't know the rules. You don't know what can happen in life. There's no justice in life. But in games, there is luck, but you know what could happen. Uh, it's more satisfying than the real life. It's more clear than real life. You take your chances, you, you know exactly the, the rules before. I think this year, I haven't been able to prep at all. I'll definitely need a bit of luck on my side. I play three games a day every day, so I'm kind of playing the numbers, as it were. If you've got, say, a 50-50 shot at five different games, that means you're going to win two and a half of them. 
There's a time limit with poker. And it has to be over within four and a half hours, so basically the blinds are just sped up. After about 20 minutes, blinds go up, and they kind of double every time. And it just gives a different aspect of playing poker. It's almost a different game, as a sense that you have to have different strategies. You have to be a bit more aggressive. James Apple, I think he's currently leading. I'm hoping for anybody else than, than him. All in. Oh, he didn't oh, No spade. Oh, you won, you This is pretty unreal. So these kind of things are inevitable sometimes. <laughs> really good start, like a 90 and a nice six or something. Mabina will be happy. Mabina will be happy. <laughs> yeah. I heard James won the poker. He started off strong in Stasmus too. He's looking like the front runner for the pantomime. You know, yeah. We've just had one day. Um, so there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot to play for. I'll take a bit to read it. Yeah, is that okay? Thank you. This man will win the pantomime. That's my Today's like my chill day. They expect to do that well. And yeah, I can chill, have fun. Play games I enjoy. don't realise just how flexible and diverse your mind has to be to win the pentamine. Some of the variation within the games, this is very easy to get in sports. So it's like thinking someone who wins cricket is going to throw the javelin at a world record level. You're burning calories. You're playing 14 hours a day non-stop. It does take a real physical drain. If you look at the power consumption of some of these computer programs using the 3,000 processors, it will be vast. I certainly feel as if that's what's happening when I play. Yoyo, Kessen no Toki ga kimashita. Mitsuo kun. Inspired by sumo, in Abalone, you're trying to push your opponent's marbles off the board. Once you've pushed six marbles off the board, you won the game. There's a kind of beauty to a lot of games. There's this hidden chaos, and underneath it, there are these shapes and patterns, it's like you're kind of dancing your way through it. Most positions, if you're playing correctly, are very, very delicate make one mistake, your total control goes to automatic loss of the game. It was always going to be a tough ask. I haven't yet finished below fourth in a tournament, so it's not been going badly. <laughs> but you need to improve on fourth if you want to win. Hello, my name is Tony Korf. I'm here at the Mind Sports Olympiad and we're playing the game of Triolet shortly and I have a technical question about the rules. Oh, um, what game were you playing again, sorry? Triolet. Triolet. It's basically Scrabble with numbers, but you can only make three letter words in a sense. So you have these tiles that are numbers, but the three tiles have to add up to 15. Ankush is a young, brilliant mathematician. He was an English national in chess, in bridge. He got a really quick mind. And it's very quick to learn new games. He's a serious candidate for the final victory. 
it's hurting me a bit that Andres has won the pens mine four times, and I don't see him as a much better gamer than myself. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit mad about that. I won a couple of games. My Olympics are starting now. I'm here to have fun, so let's start to have fun. So how are you feeling about the uh, pentamine? I, mean, so I don't have a score yet. Well, there's a long week to go. You've got a great shot, Jess. You've always got a great shot. I won both games this time. I'm currently share first. So James is winning at Agricola. Uh, is he? How are you doing? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Final table? Do you want to lead you? Uh, no, they're both one eight. Two, one six. 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 challenging Euro games out there. I mean, basically you're a farmer and you're trying to control resources, but there are a lot of nuances to Agricola. And because of that, it's considered to be one of the hardest Euro games. James Heppel. Well, I sometimes describe him as lucky. <laughs> a couple of years ago, he won. Millions of gold medals it started from the first day. Gold, 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 silver, gold, gold. All the games where you might have a 50-50 decision, they seem to go my way. And I'd obviously, you know, picked games that I was good at and had a good strategy for, but sometimes you feel everything clicks into place some years, and that year everything fell into the right place. All the cards were aces, um, and it had gone really well. The Pentamine Trophy is on top of my games cabinet. Every time I go and get a game out to play, I look up and think, I did well that one year. The year that he won the Pentamine, he was basically crushing everybody in every single event. And not even able to come up with, uh, with his weaknesses. Although for Formula One drivers, there is a saying that you are losing one second per lap with each hit that you have. Marriage, uh, I think it works the same way. It takes something away from your focus. James will try 150% each time to win <laughs> every game. Even against my friends who have never played before. <laughs> Guilty. I remember my first chess competition where I lost and I just came out crying and just couldn't stop crying. And I think it's that drive. You want to win so badly that you will go away and prepare. And if you win, it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> Got a bit lucky, cards came up in the right order, but made the most of it. And uh, yeah, went really, really well. So happy. <laughs> should give me 90 something points, which is huge, so yeah, it's outrageous, great stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I usually like James, but not this time. There will be a tournament going on uh, you know, during the day, and, you know, if you also want someone to teach you that, there's also going to be backgammon if you want to see that. No, I think I've got off to a good start, but it's a long week, there are loads of events left, you never know how other people are going to do and perform, um, so it's just about keeping positive and trying to do well where you can. Corridor literally takes less than 30 seconds to learn how to play.
you have a pawn that you need to get to the other side of the board. Once you get there, you win. The only catch is that you and your opponent can both put these blocks in front of your opponent's pawn and block their path. When you want to be the Ventamine champion, the most important is just love towards the game. Because without it, uh, you don't have this kind of inner need to become better. Among my friends, we are rather serious about the Ventamine championships. And if we feel that we need some practice, so we gather together, mostly in my place, and play. <laughs> Actually, I have done basically nothing with the apartment. It was the same way when I bought it one and a half years ago. I just like if there is a lot of room for some uh, table games or poker nights. The only thing that has changed is, is the trophies. <laughs> How do you feel? Great. I have never beaten him before, so in this game. So far, so good. Who is your next opponent? Uh, David Pierce. Oh. Yeah, the reigning champion. I should win, as I said. Yeah. It's not guaranteed, never guaranteed against Andrews, but it'll probably be me who loses it rather than him who wins it. We're voting for David. Are you hoping for David? Oh, yeah, definitely. Is it because of the UK camaraderie? Or? No, no, well, mainly because of the current points thing, so he's less worried about me. I'm less worried about David than Andrews. <laughs> Andrus, he's the most tricky opponent for me. I'm most likely to have a direct head-to-head -head with him. In terms of his form, he's basically the benchmark. David Pierce, he's definitely a strong favourite. Definitely somebody to, to be afraid of. Yes. How do you feel? Great. Yeah. Great. I am back in the game now. Yeah? That feels great. So now you're put the phantom and the title could be yours. Now everything is possible. Can't change what it is because it's a Swiss system, so whoever he played with is changed by the number of points uh -huh. he has. So if he had started with two, he would have had harder games. Okay. Mm -hmm. Andres won Corridor. He said he wasn't the best prepared player, player but he showed up when, when it mattered, so it's a sign of a champion. Mm -hmm. I'm on the final table for a choir. Got one more game to go. We'll see what happens. Choir is a great multiplayer game where you get to own shares in different companies. It's about timing your cash flow and you get paid out money based on how many shares you have. And in the end of the game, Whoever has the most money, based on the number of shares they've had throughout the game, wins. Pankush, he likes competition in everything. He doesn't do anything half, let's put it this way. If he has to do something, he has to do it completely full. And when he's working on something, 
He puts himself through such a treadmill, I tell you. I think he likes the joy of winning. In the last year, he just lost it, didn't he? I think he came, he was in the car when I picked him and he says, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, he was saying. But that's about to get from Ankush, you don't get more than that. The medals don't mean anything to me. The personal pride I feel from winning, that's what matters. For me, it's like first place and nothing else. Come second, come eighth, like it doesn't matter. Like I want to win. Won your choir, so back in the race, you know, quite pumped. I know the other guys are doing great, but I've got two events now. I need to get three more. I'm, I'm a poker pro, I'll definitely get a big poker score. And then just need to just need a bit of luck, you know, win that Monopoly, win that Lost Cities. Everyone's got a chance. I don't need much thinking time, but I do need to know what the board state is, otherwise I'm just playing randomly. I need to learn your technique. <laughs> So we just finished the final table of Peru Day. I managed to take it down. From a personal level, I think it's been a pretty good mind sports for me so far. But James's mind sports has been phenomenal. I've never seen such a performance. So, who knows? I also have to say I like the uh, a really nice, oh my gosh, the 136 SV888 is pretty amazing actually. That is, that is going to be a very impressive trophy. Another rule which confuses people is they think they cannot charge rent if they are in jail. Yes, you can. Towards the end of the tournament, sometimes you just have to play a game that lots of players have registered for, because the more players there are, the higher the pentamine score you can get. It's in a very strong position. Blocked my trade, and then it ends up somehow stronger on this. Playing against weak players, that happens in the mind sports for sure. And as a competitive gamer, I've just got to exploit that and maximise my chance to win. If you really want it, I'll sell it right now for 300. 
the 300. Yeah. Yes or no? I feel like sometimes we can't even play in the same game together and both have a good time. 250, yeah. No, that's it. Fine, I'll do 300. No, I, I just, no, you refuse, I said no. Okay. Yeah, currently in the lead. Andres has a good chance to catch me. He's playing a lot of long events, and if he does well in two of them, uh, then he may or may not overtake me. He's playing Entropy, right. which I'm also playing. Entropy I think it's a really beautiful, pure game. There's two sides, order and chaos. The board starts empty, seven by seven board, and there's seven sets of seven coloured discs. Chaos pulls them out one by one, places them on a board in ways that are trying to be obstructive to pattern making. And then order gets to move, and they're trying to make palindromic patterns, and you get more points for the bigger patterns. Stamina is very important because if you are tired, the mistakes are much easier to come. There is an element of kind of pacing yourself over the eight days. Some games are pure skill and require a lot of thinking and concentration. If you've had a bad night's sleep or you've had a very long, grueling day, you've had to concentrate a lot, you can be losing by like move five. And then it's just a downhill struggle. I have managed to keep myself fresh until the very last session. This might be the reason why I have so often come from behind to win the title. Andres, he played really well. But I just found out that Anchor's just doing well in the Monopoly, so... Yeah. Yeah. But there's still another round left, so we'll see what happens. You, why, you can why trust, can you trust him? Because I don't have an interest in winning this game. I have an interest in making sure you don't win. It's a hustler's game. That's how it is. Ankush has just been doing the gamesmanship whereby he's trying to do deals in order to get Ian to win. Because Ankush has worked out that if Ian wins, he's in with a good chance of getting a gold. He's made a miscalculation. I wanted to freeze the table. I wanted to guarantee second place. It means I've won the Monopoly tournament on outright. So Joseph was saying that you may have miscalculated it, and that may not be a guarantee. Yeah, I won the tournament outright. But right now I feel amazing. I've just won Monopoly outright, which puts me on a pretty good pantomime score. I might have actually just overtaken James, which is huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's never over till the last event, the last game, the last round. It normally comes down to the end and it's touch and go, so we'll see. This is what it's all about. Somebody's gonna win this baby today. James is just ahead by a fraction, but the momentum's with Ankush, and I still wouldn't count Andrew's seven. Lines of action, very simple idea. You've got half of your pieces on one side of the board and half of your pieces on the other side. And 
you're just trying to bring all your pieces together so that they touch. You can take your opponent's pieces, and you can try and block them, but at the end of the day, it's really just about trying to bring your pieces together to win the game. I fell in love with Lunch of Action the very first time I looked up the rules. For some reason, I felt that me and Lines of Action we are meant to be together. When Andres won last year, I congratulated him, said well done, but I can't hide how I was feeling. Last year, after me winning the title, I was pretty emotional, jumping up and down like a little child. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try and take him down this year. How's your morning going? Ah, uh, terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My chances are now barely over, so it's going to be between Nankos and James. And the one who wins lines of action wins the Ventamind as well. Obviously, I'd be uh, <laughs> disappointed to come second now, but um, you can't change how other people play, you just got to play the best yourself, and I hope that's enough. Let's bring to page one, three, and four. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that's the other way. I'm just trying to make it right, so I've got it ready for you for next year when you come. Hello. With 476 points, the Pentamine World Champion is James Heppel. for a week, being at the top's obviously good, but you're always watching out for all the other competitors trying to catch you up. Got my highest ever pentamine score, would have won in previous years. Just, uh, it sucks to have another silver medal, that's all I can say. But it's finally worth it, and managed to get gold and two victories, so very happy.
Please welcome Ankush Kandwar! Yeah. Yeah.